With so many different MRI sequences to choose from, how do you know what to use for a breast MRI? The first thing you need to realize is that every facility's MRI protocols are different. Don't worry about the specifics. The main thing you have to do is grasp concepts. Here is an example of a sample breast MRI protocol. It starts with a scout localizer followed by an axial SPGR sequence. This is a T1 weighted sequence without fat saturation. Next, a T2 weighted sequence or an axial stir. This is T2 weighted with fat suppression. Next, an axial T1 fat saturated sequence. This is the beginning of the dynamic series. This is the pre-contrast image. This is followed by phase one, which is usually done around two minutes. Again, fat saturation is performed for all contrast enhanced sequences. Axial phase two, which is done at four minutes after contrast administration and phase three at six minutes after contrast administration. This can be followed by a sagittal high resolution post contrast image, which ends up being approximately eight minutes after contrast injection. You also have several options for evaluating the images using computer aided detection. This software allows for creation of axial and sagittal subtraction images, coronal or sagittal or any other plane reformats, color mapping and evaluation of kinetics and rotating MIP or maximum intensity projection images. Let's go through the sequences one by one. The triplane scout localizer is used by the technologist to check positioning and set the field of view. Next, a T1 non fat saturated sequence can be used to show the anatomy and also shows susceptibility artifact very well. Biopsy clips and surgical changes jump out on this non fat saturated sequence. On STIR or T2 fat suppressed sequences, you are looking for T2 brightness. This can be cysts inflammation, edema, or any other finding within the breast or associated surrounding tissues. The beginning of the dynamic contrast sequence is a T1 fat suppressed pre-contrast image. On the pre-contrast images, you're evaluating anatomy and looking for any pre-contrast high T1 signal. After contrast administration, you're looking for enhancement for bright spots within the breast. Because it is a dynamic series, you can evaluate kinetics. Multiple phases or sequences are performed through the breasts, usually at one to two minute intervals. This allows for subtraction sequences later to see whether the enhancement is progressing or washing out. A sagittal high resolution post contrast sequence can be very helpful in evaluating the location of an abnormality. This sequence is also the most helpful for planning an MRI guided biopsy. Using the computer aided detection software, subtraction images can be created where you subtract the pre contrast sequence from the peak post contrast sequence, which is usually phase two. And then this makes evaluating for bright spots much easier. Computer aided detection color mapping can be useful to evaluate the enhancement kinetics. The software also allows for creation of enhancement curves to tell whether a lesion has persistent plateau or washout kinetics. Washout and plateau kinetics are more concerning for malignancy. A MIP or maximum intensity projection provides a great overview of both breasts. It's extremely useful in evaluating multifocal or multicentric disease. Using the computer aided detection software, you can create reformats in any plane, axial, sagittal, coronal, or more. This can help evaluate the exact size and extent of disease as well as its relation to the nipple or chest wall. Diffusion weighted imaging is an emerging technique used to help decide between benign or malignant. Malignant lesions tend to have denser cellularity and therefore restricted diffusion. With breast MRI sequences, know what each sequence does best and then tailor your exam and your search pattern accordingly. Thank you for watching. Please click subscribe to see more of our content or go to mammoguide.com to learn more about breast imaging.